Tonight on Texas News Primetime. A look into the process of voter registration. A judge orders Ken Paxton to testify. And the editor-in-chief of the Texas Tribune makes a special visit at UT Austin. You're watching Texas News Primetime. News made for Longhorns. Good evening and welcome to Texas News Primetime. For Monday, October 10th, I'm Ariba Barmo. And I'm Joseph Sweeney. Thank you for joining us tonight. Vice President Kamala Harris spoke at the Texas Democratic Party's annual Johnson & Jordan reception this Saturday at the Hyatt Regency Hotel. The event, named after Texas Democrats President Lyndon B. Johnson and State Senator Barbara Jordan, supports Democrats currently campaigning for the upcoming November 8th elections. Harris said reproductive rights, health care, and inflation will be the deciding factors and promises that Democrats, if elected, would vote to codify Roe v. Wade, legalize marijuana, and cancel student loan debt. Last week, federal judge Robert Pittman ordered Texas Attorney General Ken Paxton to testify in a, a lawsuit brought by, by eight nonprofit organizations that deal with assisting pregnant individuals with scheduling and paying for out-of-state abortions. Judge Pittman stated that only Paxton can describe what he meant when he threatened legal, vague legal retaliation against those who seek abortions in states where the procedure remains legal. Lawyers for Paxton indicated that he does not consider out-of-state abortions illegal. However, court filings suggest that as Attorney General, Paxton is required to pursue civil penalties against violators. With the deadline to register to vote being tomorrow, TNP reporter Kevin Myers explains everything students need to know for the upcoming election. Here's his story. On November 8th, America heads back to the polls for the midterm elections to pit candidates from local races all the way up to Congress. For many students, this will be their first election. October 11th is the deadline. But first of all, I mean, they need to register soon because time is running out in terms of if you want to be eligible to vote in this election. Just know that you can't do it online. You have to do it with, a, with paper and pen. Hand it over to an election official by a, a certified registrar or go to one of your county offices and, and register there directly. Additional dates to know include October 24th as the start of early voting, October 28th as the deadline to apply for a mail-in ballot, and November 4th as the last day to vote early in person. Uh, if you want to vote in person on Election Day, you may, depending on what county you're living in, have to vote at a specific uh, precinct, and you can go on the Secretary of State's website and look up where it is you are registered to vote and where you should be voting. Uh, but I would suggest that if a student is thinking about voting by mail and they can vote early, they should probably vote early. In addition to voting, there are many other ways for students to get involved this cycle as well. There's a lot of uh, groups on campus that are very concerned about getting getting out the vote. So more young people are going to vote Democrat than they're going to vote Republican. So when people get here to UT, they're not registered, they just moved, they need to get registered. That's what we're here for, just registering as many people as we possibly can. We've been, uh, we did a deployment, uh, not this past weekend, but the weekend before, uh, where we went and knocked on doors for some candidates. So we're getting students directly involved in the voting process, not just on the voting end, but on the get out the vote effort. As to why students should participate, UT professor Roderick Hart has a message for Generation Z. They've grown up in, in probably the most partisan era that uh, we've had in the United States in a very, very long time. That can do two things. That can, that can make you uh, depressed and demoralized or can make you involved. I think we will get to a point in this country where people will be much more reasonable with one another and, and listen more carefully. For TSTV News, I'm Kevin Myers. <coughs> Mathematics professor Rachel Ward of the College of Natural Sciences has been presented an award from the National Science Foundation for her contributions to data sciences, machine learning, and linear algebra, among other fields. The $2.7 million grant will help establish Encore, a collaborative data science research initiative between UT, UCLA, UC San Diego, and the University of Pennsylvania. Claudia Lucinetti, current Dean of Clinical and Translational Science for Mayo Clinic, will assume the role of Dean of Dell Medical School in December. Lucinetti will also serve as the university's Vice President for Medical Affairs. The editor-in-chief of the Texas Tribune made a special appearance last week at a workshop hosted by the Asian American Journalists Association. Texas News primetime reporter Kevin Bosker attended the event. Let's take a look into what happened. The GB Dealey Center for New Media graced an exquisite guest this past Tuesday. Presented by the Asian American Journalists Association, all the way from the Texas Tribune, 
Chief and Editor Sewell Chan made a special appearance for students at the University of Texas at Austin. Well, if you're thinking about doing journalism professionally, that in, you're at the hardest time right now because you're, how do you get the experience to then qualify for positions to get more experience? That's a real hurdle. Once you have passed that, I'm happy to report it does get easier. Without a doubt, many students felt that Chen's presence gave them great insight into what the journalism world has to offer. Is that all the stuff he said? I think no matter what you do as a journalist, you're always going to be like a bit of a controversial figure. Uh, they made a decision to publish a couple of letters to the editor that were, I guess, in support of Donald Trump during the last election. So he got some flack for that, but he, you know, stood by that decision. And I definitely see that you can't really be afraid of controversy when you're in the world of journalism. I think it was interesting the way he talked about like the importance of community and local journalism and how it um, once we have if we don't have that then that vacuum is filled with misinformation and stuff like that and also just like being open-minded. Nonetheless, Chen's appearance was not only a great experience for students, but also for Chen as well. Well, I mean, I really wanted to, you know, just kind of exchange ideas and there were really great questions. I've always enjoyed talking with and working with students because, you know, you all represent kind of the future. Apart from his expert advice, the workshop was well received by students because of Chen's charisma and amiability. He seems like a really nice guy. He really seems to, you know, know his stuff. Seeing someone who's so accomplished, he also went through the struggles. Like, he didn't get his internship. He got rejected too. So I think, especially for me, I was like, wow, I feel better. My biggest advice to students, just read broadly. You know, consume a lot of information because that will actually help you become a better journalist and a more curious person. I'm Kevin Bosker, reporting for TSTV News. Uvalde school officials announced on Friday that the entire district police department would be suspended. Two officers, Lieutenant Miguel Hernandez and Ken Muller, were placed on leave while the rest of the officers fill other roles in the district. Not long after the statement, Uvalde School District Superintendent Hall Harrell announced that he planned to retire after three decades with the district. The, stu the school district trustees plan to meet to discuss Harrell's retirement options and transition plan. Governor Greg Abbott has appointed the first chief of S school security and security, a position he directed to Texas Education Agency to create around two weeks after the Uvalde tragedy. John P. Scott, a former U.S. Secret Service agent, will fill the position. Beto stopped by UT Austin during his college tour to talk to students, take some selfies, and get students registered to vote. TNP's Angie Santos and I attended the rally and talked to some volunteers. Here's the story. Ahead of Texas's October 11th voter registration deadline, Democratic candidate for governor Beto O'Rourke began a college tour across Texas. His first stop brought him to UT Austin on September 26th. We're going to win this election on the night of November 8th. We're going to win this election because we are fighting for every woman to make her own decisions about her own body, her own future, and her own health care. We're going to win this election because we're going to make sure that we prioritize the lives of our kids in those classrooms over the NRA, the special interests, or any politician for that matter. Judy, a campaign volunteer, has been a supporter of Beto since his Senate race in 2016. Well, I think that the young voters need to know what's really happening, especially in um, Texas politics, because a lot of decisions are being made that are going to greatly affect you guys, especially young women. Beto discussed the difficulties of voting in Texas, especially for people of color, due to the closing of polling places across the state. When our state has shut down 750 polling places, twice the number of the next closest state, and most of those closures in the fastest growing black and brown neighborhoods in the state of Texas. When outside of TSU on election, we will see people six hours deep in line. You know, I heard someone the other day say, would you want your grandmother to pick out your clothes? And they, no, well, you don't want your grandma making the, all the legislative decisions as well. Eric Adams, mayor of New York City, declared a state of emergency this past Friday. The announcement is over the arrival of thousands of migrants who are bused from Texas. Adams said, quote, we now have a situation where more people are arriving in New York City than we can immediately accommodate, including families with babies and young children, end quote. Adams also urged federal officials and state officials to increase funding to help New York City host migrants, as the current situation is unsustainable. 
With midterms coming up in November, President Joe Biden last Thursday announced a pardon of all federal marijuana possession charges and asked state governors to issue state-level pardons for marijuana possession. While Texas Governor Greg Abbott had previously expressed support for reducing the criminal penalty for small amounts of weed possession, Rene Eze, a spokesperson for Abbott, said, quote, the governor of Texas can only pardon individuals who have been through the Texas Board of Pardons and Parole System with a recommendation for pardon, end quote. Coming up, Angie Santos will be bringing you up to date in the world of business. Stay tuned. Business correspondent Angie Santos. How are you doing today, Angie? Good. Thank you so much for having me here. All right. Well, tell me a bit about what's happening in the world of business. Oh, for sure. As of right now, OPEC Plus announced a 2 million barrel per day decrease in oil production. This announcement comes as gas prices in the U.S. are already on the rise due to demand and refinery issues while oil prices spiked over the summer due to Russia's invasion of Ukraine. Global prices have since declined. However, this announcement will likely cause increases according to Capital Economics Research group. And then the UK is facing an exodus of star scientists with at least 16 recipients of prestigious European grants making plans to move their labs abroad. The move is prompted by the UK remaining frozen out of the EU's flagship science program. The past Friday as well, the teacher retirement system of Texas, TRS, announced that they had sold their headquarters located on Red River Street. The headquarters currently houses nearly 1,000 employees. The 3.8-acre property went for $108 million to Mueller Business District, a real, invest, real estate investment trust. A regional office for TRS is set to open in El Paso, Texas in November 2022. All right, well, thank you for coming on today, Angie. Uh, in STEM news, TNP reporter Hope Vanderberg talked with UT doctoral candidates on breakfast habits. Let's take a look. Actually seeing those long-term impacts has really shifted my perspective. So I'm always, always about breakfast now. I eat it every day. It always seemed like a big thing to follow, but having now been in this lab and experiencing um, you know, all of the different techniques associated with breakfast, it's more of an integral part of my day. Our big question is really, are there benefits to eating breakfast? We're really specifically looking at body composition in this long-term trial and kind of how the introduction of breakfast in these people who habitually don't eat breakfast, how can that really impact some of these outcomes across the long term? We really tend to see this increase in breakfast giving habits among young teens and adolescents and young adults. And in this very sensitive window, we have individuals who are forming their habits for a lifelong of, of what they'll eat and, and how they'll eat it. We really are recruiting in that, it, that age range, so anyone from 13 to 21, but since we are on campus, uh, we are very accessible to these UT students. We do provide uh, breakfast meals for six months for everyone, uh, plus some free food with our testing weeks as well. And uh, you can actually see an impact on how your eating habits might change some of your habits. I'm really excited about this year just because it will be a very full study and we have a lot of exciting stuff happening. Even on the smallest scale, remembering that this needs to impact the greater population. Like, why are we doing this? Why does it matter? We've actually seen a lot of um, prominent research lately about how your um, ha dietary habits now can impact yourself later in life. Improving some of these habits like eating breakfast or exercising can decrease your risk of heart disease or obesity, diabetes, things like that in the future. Hopefully those findings are able to assist individuals in potentially incorporating breakfast into their habitual dietary pattern um, and maybe that can build into a greater healthy dietary pattern overall. Like we can really show an impact on the rest of your lives. Coming up, Tommy Yarish will be coming on for our special segment, Press Box on Primetime, so stay tuned. Welcome back. Coming on for our special segment of Press Box on Primetime is Tommy Yarish. How are you doing today, Tommy? I'm doing great. Thanks for having me. 
Yeah, it's great to have you. All right, Tommy, can you tell me about what happened this weekend at the OU game? Yeah, so let's go ahead and take a look at the highlights from the Cotton Bowl. This Saturday, we're going to get started right off out of the first quarter. It's going to be Bijan Robinson doing what Bijan does best right up the middle from two yards out for the first score of the night. 7-0 Texas into the second quarter. Eight plays into the drive. Quinn Ewers keeps it on the option. He's got Xavier Worthy wide open over the middle. His first touchdown of the day. 14-0 Texas. They're rolling. A few minutes later, Horns in the red zone once again. Keelan Robinson gets it in the flat. Check out Jordan Whittington there with the nice block to let Robinson waltz into the end zone for the 15-yard score. It's 21-0 Texas. Looks like a little bit of last year. Here comes Oklahoma. Eric Gray tries to throw it up over the middle. That's never a good idea. And Jade Barron gets the easiest interception of his life. Texas gets the ball back in the second quarter, up 21-0. End of the half now. Here's one of the best throws from Quinn Ewers on the day. Fits it in to Jatavion Sanders. Sanders, who waltzes in for his first touchdown of the day. Now at the last play of the first half, Davis Bevel trying to hit the deep ball, and it just falls right into the hands of waiting to Sean Jamison, his second interception of the year. That sends us to the half. Now in the third quarter, Bijan, touchdown number two for him. 11 yards out, 35-0 Texas, late third quarter. Steve Sarkeesian, a lot letting off the gas now. Ewers into the end zone again. It's fourth touchdown throw of the night connection. This time, the second time for JT Sanders. Do you think they were done? Absolutely not. It's the pride of Hallettsville, Texas. Jonathan Brooks caps off the game with an 18-yard touchdown run. 49 to nothing is your final score in the Red River shutout for Texas, the largest margin of victory in rivalry history. Texas snaps a four-game losing streak to the Sooners, and the Golden Hat is finally back in Austin once again. This win is a huge boost for the program, especially after the heartbreaking loss a season ago to Oklahoma. What was the difference between that game and this one? Yeah, I think there's a really big difference. Now, the biggest difference by far, though, was Quinn Ewers. I think he is the most talented quarterback that Texas has had since Colt McCoy was in a Longhorns jersey. I know that's a really big statement for him just a couple games into his season, but nonetheless, we're only going to be able to get him to see him more as time goes on. Keep in mind, he still has yet to play all four quarters of a game. Now, that says a lot about how impressive he is, and granted, he has been gone due to some deep, mediocre teams and an injury against Alabama, but nonetheless, people are going to say, quote, this is the worst Oklahoma team since 1998. This wasn't an impressive win for Texas. This is the worst Oklahoma has looked since 1998, but that doesn't shy away from the fact that Texas dominated every facet of this game and shut it out the Sooners. Not a lot of people shut out Oklahoma. Just look at their past. Look at how successful they've been. And the Longhorns were not only able to do that, but they were able to pick apart the entire defense and score seven touchdowns. It'll be interesting to see how the rest of the Sooner season goes. I do think Brent Venables is a great head coach, but he definitely has a lot to work on to get Oklahoma back to the greener pastures of the past and how good they have been and how consistent they've been. Texas, on the other hand, they're on the rise, but they just need to prove that they can be consistent. On Saturday, Iowa State is coming into town. What has to happen for the Longhorns to move to 3-1 to one in Big 12 gameplay? Yeah, so that goes right back to me talking about being consistent, right? This is a sneaky game, and I think it's gotten overlooked the past few years. That's why Iowa State has won the last three matchups. Last season, it was a 30-7 to seven route where the Cyclones dropped 21 in the third quarter to seal the win. They certainly lost a lot of contributing talent on offense. Brock Purdy and Brees Hall head to the NFL, and they've struggled so far this year to find offensive rhythm and confidence play but nonetheless all three of their Big 12 losses have been by a combined 11 points and last week they limited a talented Kansas State office to just 10 points Deuce Vaughn had 23 yards on the ground that's unrealistic for him they're hanging around in these games if Texas wants to win this one they'll have to figure out early what works for them on offense Texas Iowa, Iowa State excuse me has the 13th ranked rush defense amongst FBS schools and they rank 24th in passing yards allowed so they're a stout crew on the defensive side of the ball the good thing for Texas is they have enough offensive weapons to spread the ball around and force the Cyclones to decide whether they want to attack the run or pass defensively. I think whichever way they go, Texas is going to have an answer. And it, it helps even more that Alabama transfer tight end Jaleel Billingsley comes back from his six-week suspension this week. That just gives Steve Sarkeesian more to work with. And just like we saw against Oklahoma, he already has a plenty of talented players to use. Well, thank you for coming on, Tommy. Up next is Entertainment with Kevin Myers.
Welcome back to, Te to Texas News Primetime. On tonight to discuss current happenings in entertainment is Kevin Myers. How are you doing tonight, Kevin? I'm doing all right. How about you? Uh, doing pretty good. So uh, what's going on in the world of entertainment? Well, first off, um, the film Rust is set to resume shooting once again. This is, of course, the film that back in October of 2021, uh, DP Hala Hutchins was tragically killed after a gun held by Alec Baldwin accidentally went off on set and struck her. Baldwin has now reached a settlement with Hutchins with Hutchins' family, and the film will resume production in January, according to the terms of the settlement. Matthew Hutchins, Hala's husband, will now serve as executive producer. All right, and uh, something, so there's some shakeups going on at CNN. Can you tell me a little bit about that? That's right. So Don Lemon, host of Don Lemon Tonight, did his final broadcast of Don Lemon Tonight last Friday. This is as part of a broader shakeup at CNN from new uh, president Chris Licht. Don Lemon will be moving to the morning show, and he will be joined by Caitlin Collins, White, former White House correspondent, as well as Poppy Harlow, anchor of Newsroom. He's also set to pick uh, a replacement for Chris Cuomo's old time slot later this fall. All right, and uh, finally, I hear uh, ACL is going on this week. That's right. Um, a lot happened at ACL. I did not go personally. Um, we did see Pink flew through the air on a string of cables, which was pretty cool. Um, that kind of went a little bit viral. And then on top of that, we also saw um, we, we saw uh, Mumford & Sons, uh, lead singer, performed by himself for the first time. So that was interesting. All right, well, that's all the time we have for you tonight, Kevin, but thanks for coming on. Absolutely. And then thanks for coming on, and as always, we thank you, the viewer, for turning in. For updates and web exclusive from Texas News Primetime, follow the show on social media by searching Texas News Primetime. From all of us at TSTV News, thank you for watching, and go out and change your world.